right, everybody. So today we're gonna do a herb walk of the Cumberland Forest, where we learn about all the medicinal and edible plants here on the West Coast. We're gonna do a herb walk. Come join us for a herb walk. It's not just connecting with plants, it's noticing them in their environment. Now, all of us kind of know a maple tree, right? But this one in particular is unique because you see these flowers? They're in right now, but there's these little bugs on them. And what I've noticed is that these bugs are teasing the sugars out of the maple flowers, making them that much more sweet. So in this case, maple flowers are tasty, but these ones right here, no, they're full of bugs are way sweeter because the bugs have been nibbling at the stems and creating sugars to come out. Now this is a unique thing that you won't find all the time and you might be able to see in the sun here a little bit of this kind of sweetness on here, all these kind of sticky bits. These are the kind of unique relationships we start to see in nature is that not only are there plants but there's also these interactions that they have with the world around them and that's what we're here to discover is how these relationships unfold, how these beings interact and how we can learn to interact similarly. Like, in this case, mmm, this is like candy. Wow. Thank you, Maple. And thank you, Bugs. Wow. You know, within like 10 steps, we can find over a dozen powerful medicinal plants. In this case, here we are, we've got tansy. Mmm. We've got yellow dock. Wow. We've got dandelion. Whoa, and we got this big bad boy here, Burdock. I just love sticking this stuff to myself. I don't know why, but somehow I think one of my herbal missions in life is to spread plants where I go. When I see the dandelion flowers, I like to spread their seeds. Now I know that these plants are only here for a short period of time. What's their job? Well, these are hardworking plants that are here to help build back the ecology of the soil. Build it up to a place where we can have new forest growth. Underneath all of these plants, you might see little sprouts of trees coming up. And within the course of a century, this is all gonna be forest again. Even though we've disturbed this land and we've created kind of a dead zone, in our opinion, full of weeds, well, guess what? These weeds are just here to make better forests in the long run. Here's another great example of a people plant, the Japanese knotweed. Now this one's been hacked back because it's considered an invasive weed. But you know what? This is one of the more medicinal plants in the area. One aspect of plant medicine that I'm really keen to know more about and like to find the correlations between are what are called doctrine of correspondence, which is how certain things relate to other things. In this case, we have a plant here, the Japanese knotweed, which is one of the most useful plants for Lyme disease. And what's interesting is that this plant has moved up the coast at the same rate as the Lyme disease has. We used to not have Lyme disease here on the West Coast, and then as it came, so did this plant, which can be one of the best allies to help heal it. Take a look at this landscape here for a second. To a lot of people, this looks like an industrial zone ready to happen. It could be the next major subdivision. But to me, this is an amazing, abundant array of some of my favorite friends and allies. We've got some buttercup, these beautiful avenas here, some yellow dock. And as we look further in, we see it's full of raspberries. See that plant that looks like hot dogs on a stick back there? That's cattail. And if I were stuck on a desert island with one plant, this might be the perfect plant to sustain me. Why? Because it's full of protein in the seeds. It's got tons of starch in the roots. The leaves can all be made into thatching to make houses. And the seeds, which come out in a pillowy fluff, can make a nice insulation for a house, a coat, or that cold weather when we need it in the night times. So this one plant here could sustain us for a long period of time. Horsetail. This is a great one for our skin, hair, nails, bone health, all those structural components of our body. Plus it's got saponins in it, which are soap-like compounds to help us scrub out our tissues. You can even use them to clean our pots. Oh, my basket's clean as new. Ready for some more herbalism. Oh, here's another people plant right under our feet. Do you guys know this one? This is the plantain, Plantago majoris. In fact, it's one of our best herbal band-aids. It's great for inflammation, bug bites, any kind of sting. It helps take that sting out of bee stings. So we make it into a spit poultice. We chew it up. Mmm. 
Then I got a sting. Stick that right on my sting. And then I can take another leaf, like so, and create a herbal band-aid. Take that, stick it right through there, and put it on. Okay, the best thing to note about this plant is that it's everywhere. In fact, they call it White Man's Footprint is one of its nicknames because it's everywhere we go. So whenever you get stung, bit, inflamed, rashed, any of those kinds of things, you've got a perfect cure to help you out. So try it. Mm. Sometimes just even connecting with the plants and spending time with them, getting to know them in the different seasons is as much medicine as using them in our body. Just that time that we spend with the plants gives us an opportunity to increase our own connection and communication in this world. This is one of my favorite things to do, is just sort of a walking meditation as I walk through the fields and walk through the forests. Any of these mustards that you see, like so, have these square flowers. All of them are edible, and yum! Do they ever taste good? Nice bit of spice in your day. Mm, that one's great. There's nothing like that place where land and water meet. Kind of this connection between the different eco zones. And that's one of my favorite places with plants is the in-between zones, the places where different ecosystems meet. This is where we find the best plants and the most diverse landscape. Is that skunk I smell? Oh no, that's beautiful, beautiful plants I smell. And I love them. This is one of the most old world plants I know of, skunk cabbage. And what's interesting is that there's a lot of people who are starting to look at this as medicine. And I think what I like about that is that we're looking to these old world plants for knowledge, for teachings, for ways of showing us how to show up in the world to be in harmony with this place. These are our local West Coast fiddleheads. Now they got a lot of hair on them, but when they're young like this, we can just pull some of this hair off. We wanna be careful with fiddleheads. They do have a lot of oxalic acid in them, and they can build up oxalate crystals in the kidneys. But a couple of little ones like this, mmm, wow. That is so tender. Steam that up, pull out some of those oxalic acids, and we have ourselves a tasty little snack in the spring. Usually only get a couple of weeks a season, so it's pretty hard to overdo them. Another plant you'll often notice along the waterways are these different types of willows. Now willows are great for pain and headaches. They have that salicylic acid in them and we use the barks of these, but we don't have to use them all the time. We can just hang out with them and know that if we're over by the water's edge, maybe that in itself is good pain medicine to help relieve what it is that aches us. Food for thought. Oh, here's one I can't forget. These are little forget-me-nots. The tiniest, most dainty blue flower. Now, I've never used this one for medicine, but it sure is medicine for the heart. Mm, and these salmon berry flowers? I know we're supposed to wait till they're in berry because they're so tasty, but I can't help but eat some of the flowers. Mmm. Mmm. I just love those. Oh, there's a couple. They're almost here. We know that summer's underway when the salmon berries start to form. Here's a nice red-belted polypore. This is one where these growing edges, we can harvest that little bit right there. This spore pad is loaded with all kinds of nutrients. It has a nice, slightly bitter flavor that is gonna bring me deeper into my body and connect me with that earth consciousness. I just love enjoying these red bells. Huh, what do we have up here? Some turkey tails, nice. Oh, you know, they have this velvety feel to them. This is so great. I think I might even harvest a couple of those for tea. We're gonna do this, we don't wanna peel the bark back. We wanna just cut them along the edge because mushrooms like this, they're gonna regrow. All right, here's a couple of turkey tails that have just fallen off this tree. But it's amazing to think that underneath this whole forest is this massive mycelium that is connecting and communicating with all of these trees, all of these plants. These guys know everyone in the forest. In fact, they're friends with every other species around here. There's no real competition. You see, we think of that. We think of it all as competition here, but actually they're all communicating and cooperating together. So powerful to see and to recognize that this is a cooperative effort to make and sustain a home for everyone involved. Now, turkey tail is a powerful medicine. I mean, this is not only helpful for the liver and the immune system and the heart and the circulation, it's also 
really helpful for schooling our body in the ways of the world. I really like to make this into a tea and use that as a base for our herbal concoctions and decoctions. Mostly in the winter months, I'll use immunomodulating mushrooms like this. These kind of mushrooms help re-educate our body in how to show up in the world, giving us tools that we can turn on for our immune system and ways of adapting and functioning at a deeper level of performance and higher vitality. Sometimes I think the best medicine in the forest is just to run! Come on! You know, probably one of the most important medicines that I know of is building your relationships with the natural world. Finding a place where you can go into your own, what we call heart cave, where you can connect deeply and start to listen, start to feel, start to hear the sounds and feel the energy of what the plants are communicating. You can do this, finding a place where you can spend even five minutes in a day. Oh, there's no more powerful medicine than that. I encourage you to take the time to unwind. You don't need to know the plants, but you can learn how to know them by connecting with them in a more deep and profound way. Spend the time, listen, smell, taste, feel. Get to know the world around you. Thanks for joining us on this herbal adventure today. I hope you get out and find more plants in your area. And if you wanna learn more about herbal medicine, we have abundance on our YouTube channel, showing up all the time. So check out more videos at the link below.